Welcome to a new video from Lessons in Logic. We recently posted on this channel and also in the CGM Bet Discord channel asking what type of videos people would want to see moving forward. The feedback about our current direction was positive with people unanimously wanting us to continue as we are. Thank you to those who contributed. We look forward to producing plenty more content which will be thought provoking to the user and will challenge the norm within the sports trading field. We may even produce some more quality trading software such as our own odds analyzer tool which was the first of its kind. It's nice to see the influence this channel now has in the trading space. It's a massive compliment that others are starting to add things to their own software based on what we show and create similar videos a couple of weeks after ours. If you would like to purchase CGM Bet, you can now do so from our own link. This will get you 25% off the current price. Just go to the link on the screen and also in the description of this video to make your purchase and join many other users of this excellent betting and trading tool. One of the areas that we've been asked to look at is backtesting and in particular over what period should you test. The user says that when they test it over the previous one or three days it looks promising but when they test it over a longer period it performs poorly. Sound familiar? We are going to combine this with another request of looking at an arbitrary strategy and then analysing and profiling to see if it is worth trading or betting on. We'll create a strategy, analyse and backtest the results over a number of periods and we'll see what conclusions we come to. It is not uncommon for people to fall in love with a strategy because it has done well on a particular day or run of days. I've actually seen comments like, my winning bet has paid for my subscription to software XYZ because it won today. I bet the same person won't be so quick to post when the selection produced by software XYZ go on a winless run and is actually costing them money. This is a very narrow mindset and a surefire way to being a long-term losing trader. For example, if we had created a strategy which backed the heavy home favourites under 1.4 when they were losing 1-0 at half-time in the Premier League, you would have had Liverpool beating Southampton 3-1 in the last week. Looking at this over the entire 24-25 season, the home team wins only 43.75% of games from this position. Shouting about the success of very short trends and making them out to be some super system is never going to end well, but it is happening. This is called confirmational bias. People want to believe that something is great, so their emotions convince them that it is, even without looking at the bigger picture. Anyway, we know from previous videos that most Premier League games have at least one goal in them, almost 96% this season, with only 12 games ending 0-0. What we'll attempt to do is create a strategy that is profitable for over 1.5 goals this season. With no filtering, we can see that nearly 83% of games ends with over 1.5 goals, but with a negative yield. This is another shortcoming of newbie traders. They see a high strike rate and automatically think it has to be profitable. We can see with this strike rate, then we need odds of at least 1.21, but even that, as we see here, is a two point uh, negative yield. So we'll make a totally random strategy and see how this performs over different periods to see if it has legs or just a shot in the dark. As mentioned in a previous video, each league has its own characteristics. So what we're trying here for the English Premier League might not be suitable for the Italian Serie C. That is some analysis you'll need to do if you wanted to trade on that particular league. So we'll keep this as simple as possible. In the grid, we will bring in the over one and a half goals in the game percentage for the home team, and we'll do it for the away team as well. And we will also bring in the over one and a half goals just for the team. Initially, we'll concentrate just on goals in the game rather than per team. And we'll set the filter to bring in games where both the home and the away um, average over 83%, because 83 was the break even, even though it would give us a negative yield and we'll just do this for the English Premier League. And what we'll do is we'll just set the range to do it for the last weekend's games. And we can see games here where the home team have scored over one and a half goals in um, more than 83% of the games and likewise the away team. And now if we just put the filter on where both of those are true, then we can see we've got three games here from last weekend. Now straight away we can see all three of these would have lost because all games only had one goal in them. So straight away, that's not a great start for our strategy. So looking at the second measure where we've got the team stats. So Brentford only score 
one and a half goals, um, 57% of the time at home. Chelsea, 61, and West Ham, 42. And away, we've got Villa scoring over one and a half on 38% of the times. Leicester, 30, and Newcastle, 50. So even though the match stats t- kind of tell us this was a game to choose, then the individual team stats are telling us a different picture. We will interrogate these a bit further because that is one of the um, requirements of the user to actually uh, profile the game. So if we go into the Brentford versus Aston Villa game and look at the head-to-head on that, and if we set the colours to over one and a half goals, then we can see that um, prior to the um, Villa game, because we were looking up here to before it, then Brentford had over one and a half goals in every single one of their home games and Villa would have only had one game for Everton away where there wasn't. So on the face of it, um, the, the match stats are telling us this was a game where goals were expected, but the individual team stats were telling us a different picture completely. If we look at the Chelsea versus Leicester game in the same way and go home versus away again, then again, we can see Chelsea had over one and a half goals in all their home games and Leicester did in all their away games. So, again, we've been quite lucky not to have a winner for, for this last week. Say so the team stats don't support it, but the the match stats for these teams have. So it's obviously just the combination of who they've played, which has, um, has brought the goals. Uh, finally, West Ham versus Newcastle. And we can see that... Um, West Ham have had two occasions where there haven't been over one and a half goals. Um, Brentford and Everton and Newcastle away or also Everton. So the profile inside of it looks good from the actual game stats. But um, I say do bear in mind the individual team stats as well here are, are not as strong. But that's only over one weekend. So what we can do now is we will apply this over the previous month in a little bit. So we'll go back to the 31st of January and we will see how things perform in a longer period. So now we're just looking at the games from the 31st of January up until the 11th of March. And you can see we've got 16 games now that meet this criteria. So taking those into advanced goals, you can now see we've got a 68.75% strike rate and the yield um, minus 17.56, which is going the wrong way. Just a point, no other software will show you this yield. They just show the strike rate, so you've got no idea, even if you've got a high strike rate, as to whether your strategy is profitable or not. So uh, bear that in mind if you're looking at purchasing any trading software. Uh, CGM Bet is the one that only gives you the full picture of uh, what is going on. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to the upcoming and we'll see how the entire season performed in using this criteria. We've now got 86 games that the criteria has given us and we'll take this to advanced goals and we can see we're now at 83.72% so we're just under 84% so we've done all of this work to have a hit rate only slightly higher than what we would have done if we just had no filter and just backed every one of the games. Um, We're going to need to do a few more tweaks to make this a a profitable strategy Um, so we'll go back to the upcoming and we will now concentrate on using the team data for this. So what we've done here is we've taken the percentage for the home team where they score over one and a half goals and we've added that to the percentage where the away team score over one and a half goals and we've kind of divided by two just to get the average. And the rationale behind this is is if one team doesn't score 1.5, the other team will. Of course, we don't need both teams to score over one and a half. One one will do nicely. Hence the reason we've kept this number low and we've just gone above half just to improve the quality of the games. If we put our filter on onto these, then you can see we've got two games, which are two different games from the previous criteria. And if we send these into advanced goals, then we can see we've got two winners here with a 20.5% yield. So straight away, this is looking a little bit more uh, promising. And as before, we'll go back and we'll do the same going back to the 31st of January. So just over a month's worth of data. And this is now giving us 12 games. And again, we'll take this to the advanced goal statistics. And we can see all 12 of these games have had over one and a half goals. So we've now got a 15.58% yield on each of these. 
So what we can see here is we've tested our strategy on the previous weekend and it's looked good. We've now tested it on the previous um, almost six weeks now recording of this video and it's looking good. Every game that we've profiled would have actually given us a winner. So now we will do it for the entire 24-25 season and hopefully that will still show that it's a profitable strategy. So we have 52 games so far this season that meet this criteria and if we take those to AGS, then we can see we've got a 92.31% strike rate, but more importantly, a 6.63% yield. Certainly this season, this strategy is profitable, um, which is not bad because we've just made it up on the spot. Now what we can do is we can go back at multiple years. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the 21-22 season up until to date and we will test to see how profitable it would have been over previous seasons. So we can see here, we've got a, an overall strike rate of 83%, but a negative yield of minus 1.61. And if we didn't actually know that this year, we're currently up by 6%, we'd be chucking this strategy in the bin. Again, this brings us back to reviewing your criteria periodically. Breaking this down year on year, we can see a trend of the number of games of over one and a half goals that meets our criteria is increasing with just over a 7% increase from last year alone. This takes me back to another of our videos. So we can see here why reviewing your criteria matters greatly. I mean, in 21-22, we had 75% of games that met our criteria, we had one and a half goals. Uh, the year after that, it went up to 78, then a big jump to 85, and a big jump again this year to 92. Why is nobody else telling you to review your criteria? If you want my opinion, they haven't even thought about it because they don't have the tools to show them how to do it. Brutal but true. And just to add a few more years into this trend data here, then we can see that 2019-20 uh, was up to a similar rate than what we are now. So if um, these videos showing you this strategy were created in the 1920 season, then they would be telling you to get on at completely the wrong criteria than certainly the past three or four seasons would have done. Uh, again, why CGM bet is um, the only tool that you really should be using if you're looking at trend analysis and want the overall picture of the trending landscape. So just to recap, in this video, we've shown you how a strategy initially would have given us 100% losses for the previous week, but over time it would have been okay. We then refactored it based on data that we were presented with to give us a nice 6.63% yield. There is no other software on the market that allows you to follow a process as logically as this. Functionality of Windows-based software is far greater than web-based, not just in trading software, it's across the board. This will be discussed in a future video in more detail. To the users who put these suggestions to me, I hope I've given you a full enough response to your request. It is always nice when you can improve the numbers and actually demonstrate the positive result without needing to resort to a spreadsheet and speculating what the numbers would have been if this had happened and then that had happened, etc. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll be sure to make other thought-provoking content in the future. Thank you for watching.